North Carolina's impressive geographic diversity, from the mountains to the sea, has attracted film production activity in 75 of the 100 counties of our state, creating world-class centers of motion picture production in Asheville, Charlotte, the Triad of Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and High Point, the Triangle of Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill, and historic Wilmington and all along the Cape Fear Coast. In the past 25 years, over 700 movies have filmed on location in North Carolina with a $6 billion positive impact on the state's economy, ranking North Carolina number three in the nation for film and television production. Hundreds of North Carolina families, individuals, and support vendors are dependent on the film industry for their livelihood, and thousands of ancillary businesses across the state realize a dramatic economic impact from film production dollars. But over the past several years, North Carolina has lost hundreds of millions of production dollars due to the lack of a competitive incentive package. A bottom line business, movies have run away to other countries and states, luring them with financial benefits. Distressed by the lack of work, the loss of income, and concern for their futures, over 800 film supporters recently attended a town hall meeting to seek solutions and to rally our state legislature to pass a film incentive package now or risk losing our North Carolina film industry, a vital part of our cultural and economic heritage. We're concerned and we'd like to see something happen and very quickly. In some cases we've waited too long. I think we've lost a lot of our infrastructure, as I said earlier, already. And we want to really stop that. And we have to do it now. It, it, we can't study it anymore. We can't talk about it anymore. We have to do it now. And that's why you're here, is to send that message. Uh, other states are seeing this as a great opportunity. And uh, a number of them have passed uh, laws and, and incentive packages in the past few years. But now it's coming fast and furious. And a lot of them are right around us. Uh, I think we've heard quite a bit about Louisiana. We know that there's a lot of production in Louisiana. Louisiana had something like $20 million of production, and the next year they had $200 million of production. So the, the efficacy of, of incentives is obvious and proven. And that's in a state that had no equipment, no crew, no studios, and very little infrastructure. I'm not in this business. I've learned a lot about it, intend to learn a lot more. And tonight is a great opportunity to hear from you about what needs to happen or what your concerns are. How in the world we can allow an industry that really sprung up in this country now go other places and how we can leave and let an industry that blossomed in this state not remain a lot of it in this state. Actual working people in the industry have not always been represented and uh, I think they need to be and of course we want them to be and I've witnessed personally the the last three years of my career have been the three worst years that I've had and I've watched heartbreaking things happen to uh, my friends and comrades in the industry that have had to quit the business and had to move away have lost uh, their marriages over finances. Uh. Having people tell me I can either pay my car payment, my mortgage, or my health insurance, which do I do? Or the next question is, how much more money can I get out of my annuity that I've built up over the past few years and, you know, in the union pension plan? And it's been absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, I have members who have lost homes, lost boats, lost cars, lost their health insurance, gone through their entire annuities, and have declared bankruptcy. North Carolina needs to pass an incentive package. I already have right now. The Warner Brothers Television Studio is calling us on a daily basis trying to start seeing does South Carolina have a better deal? You should we go to Louisiana to do either this show or all future shows? Um, if an incentive package is not passed here, the business is going to leave. And I can't really state that strongly enough because there's too many places now that have incentive packages put into place that 
are forcing producers to go there because it, it comes down to dollars and cents. It's really simple. It's a dollars and cent reality. I've watched the film industry grow for the last 20 years and uh, the last three or four have just been devastating seeing the movie industry leaving. Uh, all the people that work, the men and women that have families that own homes, uh, that help support our economy, having to leave, uh, move their families to other states around the country because the work isn't here. And I think North Carolina needs to step up and begin competing with uh, some of the other states that have seen the value of the industry. I've been impacted personally, professionally, economically, and emotionally, all negatively, <laughs> in the film industry. Uh, employees that I have had on payroll at my shop for 14 years have had been let go. We're down to about three employees now. Normally we'd have eight, ten, sometimes twelve. Uh, personally, in order to keep the business going, I've sold my home. Uh, I have now moved to a smaller place. And it's felt not only in Wilmington, but statewide. The, the Charlotte commercial and, and uh, uh, motion picture industry there has suffered drastically. Um, in Asheville, there has been little or no production. Uh, and Wilmington has only had one tree hill. And we're looking back five years where we had five and six projects shooting at one time. When I was line producing Black Knight in 2000, we had Black Knight, Domestic Disturbance, A Walk to Remember, Yaya Sisterhood, and Dawson's Creek all shooting here. Now those films are going elsewhere because they can recoup money um, through incentive programs. Eighth season of doing a television series here in Wilmington, North Carolina. In that period of time, anywhere between 170 and 200 million dollars have been spent directly into the community in, in in terms of salaries, in terms of you know people buying houses here who are have been from out of town and, and now live here. But we had you know 18 million dollars in a four and a half month period of time that was dumped into our local economy. We spent oh, 10777000 on our crew payroll. Um, that's how much we paid out to the local crew. And then the extras that we hired to come in and be our background, we paid another $350,000. We spent approximately $8 million with the local vendors. Right now, for example, One Tree Hill is spending $25, $25 million a year of its budget, which, which is like half of the budget of the television series, is spent directly here in Wilmington, North Carolina. We hire 120 people, approximately 120 people full-time in the company. And out of those 120 people, there's literally only three people that are not North Carolina-based employees. The movie industry, the entertainment industry in the state of North Carolina is a half a billion dollar industry. And that's a half a billion, in, a billion dollar industry that doesn't require roads, schools, uh, water, electricity to be added. Nothing's added. They come, they hemorrhage money, and they leave. Uh, how can you not offer an incentives to a clean industry, an industry that wants to film in our state? The location department finds, rents, and manages the locations where we shoot the film. We also rent places where we park our trucks uh, and our cars and cater to our crew. That means we have to rent tents, tables, and chairs. Uh, as far as the sanitation aspect of the job goes, we have to rent porta johns and, uh, and dumpsters. Or a trash pickup. We also have to have security, so we use off-duty police officers and firemen. We also have to use, during the winter, we have to uh, rent uh, uh, heating units, and during the summer, air conditioning units. Uh, on a small budget film, you can expect the location budget to be in the tens of thousands of dollars, and on a larger budget film, it can be into the hundreds of thousands, maybe even a million plus. Being a set decorator, of course, all the antique stores, all the department stores, like your Kmarts, your Walmarts, your Targets, all the hardware stores, from Ace Hardware to the Mom and Pop Hardware stores to, to Lowe's Home Improvement, to Home Depot, to all of the frame shops, to the art galleries, to nurseries. We do all of the greens. This was a completely empty house. And this is what we did. We've just opened the set this morning. It's beautiful. We've done the paint work. Uh, we've done all the custom draperies, all the lighting, all the carpets, the books, the smalls, the furniture. 
the piano, everything that you see in the house is, um, is what the set decorating department brings in. I have been working with the movie industry through rentals and sales ever since Firestarter 1983. Uh, we've seen our largest, our best years were always the years that the industry was the strongest here. Uh, we saw an increase of anywhere from 20 to 25 percent within a one year period of when the industry was here working full time. It has impacted us in the sense of not only rentals of the merchandise that we carry for the sets, but also to the people that work in the film industry. They come in, they have spendable income, and they make purchases. Uh, I've worked on productions where we've had as many as 150 uh, tradesmen in the construction department itself. Um, and we spend, uh, I mean, we've spent upwards of uh, two to three million dollars per project in set construction in both the labor and materials. Um, our biggest consumer good is probably lumber. We've done business with the uh, film studio since they started here back about 20 years ago with the Firestarter movie. Um, our business is cyclical in nature and in years when home building is down, uh, the business we get from the film studio has, has been essential to our success. Um, I think that the people in Raleigh should work on the incentive package for the film studio. I think it's an investment in the community. It's not really an expense. Over the years, uh, the film business has been probably the, our most vital asset to our business. Uh, at one point, it probably consisted of between 50 and 60 percent of our our stuff. So. Uh, now without the film business here, uh, we have to find new avenues, new direction to go in order to keep our numbers where they've been at in the past, and it's, you know, greatly affected us in that area. We shop. We spent $197,800 over the course of our show on just catering the lunches for our crew. Wardrobe is another area. And so our stores and our malls see an awful lot of um, business from the wardrobe department. On a period show, they may be more rentals, but we have two or three costume shops in Wilmington that have period clothing. We have a, a big enough show that comes into North Carolina and we have to use um, extras. I get to hire other people to come in and work on those extras. I also get to support our um, beauty supply companies here in North Carolina by ordering uh, beauty supplies to work in the trailer with, uh, by going to the local beauty supply stores and buying from them, going to the local hair salons and buying from them. 50 to 60 percent of the revenue is brought in from the film industry, from production, from, from directors, from producers coming into the Wilmington area. It builds hotel revenue. In six months with four productions, they gave us $253,000 worth of revenue. Uh, when we moved down 2002, we had one production. That revenue was 20000 So you're looking at $230,000 worth of difference in one year. No doubt about it, North Carolina film production benefits North Carolina tourism on many levels. When the crews are here, they're spending money in our hotels, our restaurants, our shops. That impacts tourism. It brings visitors here. We have many film festivals across the, um, the entire state, dozens. They bring visitors into the area, and also visitors come to see the attractions, the locations where these movies have been made. I think the, the hardest part for me is that we're losing such an important part of our North Carolina culture. Filmmaking has been a part of the state since you know, the early 1980s and even before. And I think that it's something that obviously drives tourism. I mean, you only have to walk past Screen Gem Studios on a Sunday afternoon to find people, you know, stargazing and asking questions and wanting to be a part of it and wanting to be involved. We shoot, you know, all over downtown Wilmington and we draw a crowd everywhere we go because it's something that people are fascinated by. And those people are down there because they're shopping and they're spending money and they want to be a part of that. And I think if we lose that in our state, then we're going to lose a really important part of what makes living in North Carolina really special. I've been working on a $2 million production for a while, getting the deal set up uh, for a project. And because North Carolina offers no film incentives, I am being forced uh, to take this production to Canada. 
uh, simply because they do have a film incentives program and they are willing to give uh, the producers a rebate back on what they spend on labor in, uh, in Canada. Uh, so $2 million that could have been spent locally, could have been spent in the community, is going away. To that end, uh, the producer I'm working with has almost $60 million worth of projects in the works, all which cannot be filmed in North Carolina because there's no incentive program and their investors look for places that have incentives. Last year, um, 2004, um, more than a third of my income as a talent agency came from outside of North Carolina. Um, actors who booked films um, um, in the New Orleans area and South Carolina and, and other places other than North Carolina. One of the most important things for us is that it's helped us not be a seasonal restaurant because this is kind of a feast or famine near the beach and by having the film industry here we didn't dread January, February, March and April. Able to uh, rent books to the uh, first movie made here uh, called The Firestarter and, and that was the beginning of a real fine uh, uh, business with, with the movies and uh, this really helped me get on uh, my feet because they came in and uh, rented books uh, quickly, and uh, they would uh, often, and, and as, as the movie business enlarged, uh, it, it really, it really uh, was a good business for me. Uh, I was able to, to stay in business, and um, I would say if it hadn't have been for the movie industry, I wouldn't be here today. We spent 20 years building up a fantastic infrastructure um, and a large crew base and now we're starting to lose it and it took us 20 years to get here. Um, so you know, we're, we're very concerned about where this is going and where we're going to be five years from now because we, you know, the past five years we've seen the decline and we've seen what um, happens when projects don't come here, what happens to the crew base, um, to families to businesses. I mean, people either have to leave, they have to leave the business, and it impacts all of us, not just one, but, but everybody. There's been a long, long lineage of time in this state where our successes have been taken for granted, and that condition must be understood as no more. We cannot rest on our laurels alone. It's got to be on the wings of an aggressive incentive policy. Unfortunately, the work has just um, died here. And so I've had to be on the road for the last two years um, from Panama and Puerto Rico to um, Kentucky and Louisiana this year. And that is an extreme hardship. Just the fact that it's a strain on any marriage to be separated. There's been a lot less work around, so I do have to travel to help pay the bills, uh, which is difficult with two small kids at home. You know, I'd much rather be close to home so I can help raise them. Uh, it's no fun to live in a hotel room for couple of months on end while my kids are at home wondering where dad is. Because I have a small child I can't go to other states that have filming, filming centers such as New Orleans, um, South Carolina, Georgia because he's only seven months old so I want to stay here during his development years. If I do have to travel that means I also have to use my money to fly back and forth so I can see my child grow up and so he knows who his mother is. Um, it's hard. It's really hard. You, wondering whether or not you're going to get a job and knowing that other states have taken initiative to get film incentives and we're, our whole persona right now is that we're doing okay and I'm here to tell you we're not doing that okay. We have a lot of ethnic diversity in the community that we don't get to tap into real frequently. Um, it's amazing to me how many people um, supplement their incomes by doing extras work. Um, people on fixed incomes, people trying to get back on their feet, and they just need a job to try to get them through. Um, and so extras work is what they keep coming to, as well as crew people sometimes oh, yeah. in between productions where there maybe isn't um, the normal okay. crew position for them, they'll bounce over to extras work as well. But it's just not here right now. Being a department head uh, in the sound business, it's so specialized. The sound mixer, well, I purchased most of this equipment. It's in the several hundred thousand dollar range. And uh, I don't know what to do with it at this point. So sell it, it would just take forever to, uh, 
to get that back. Now, we want our students, the ones that we're educating here, to stay here. We don't want them to go into Louisiana and to South Carolina and to all the other states with incentives where the jobs are. We're educating them here, presumably, because we want to maintain a film industry here. And the Film Studies Department <coughs> wants to be a part of that, and we don't like the idea that our students, when they graduate, cannot get work in the state. The products of these North Carolina colleges, and it is chock full of colleges, especially with the broadcasting and film major, they wouldn't have to run outside the state or have to pick up and leave. Like I realized that I would have to pick up and leave if I was gonna survive in this business just for experience wise and just to find a job. If a statewide incentive program lures a film into Asheville, then people from all over the state will benefit. If the statewide incentive program lures a film into Raleigh, Durham, crew members from, from Wilmington, Asheville, Greensboro, Winston-Salem will all have an opportunity to work. Um, vendors and, and so forth statewide will participate in this. It's not just a regional incentive program, it is in fact a statewide incentive program. If they say go someplace else because you're going to save money, it's going to go someplace else. And those are huge, huge amounts of money to not continue to remain in the area and continue to allow film people to live here and work here as opposed to having to move to New Orleans or having to move to South Carolina, which is a taxes, it's all kinds of stuff. So I think the impact is really tremendous and I think it's essential or, in my opinion, as a producer, it's going to go away. Our politicians, legislature has to do something about this. We're going we're gonna to lose, we're going to go down the tubes. I personally have just said I've been in this business for 50 years and I have never, ever seen it as, it's worse now than when I first started and was trying to get jobs and had no, no background behind me. I lasted at it for 50 years and uh, many other people have 20 years, 10 years, 15 years, 25 years of their lives put into an industry, we're going to get out. It would serve me far better at this point if I left the state and went to Louisiana to live and to have my business. Uh, I, I just don't know. I, I, it, legis we have to do something about it. Our legislature must do it for the people. Uh, and I really think it's important for the state to stand up, look around at what's going on. What are the other states doing? They're bringing that business in. We need to do the same thing. It bring those tax dollars back in, bring those jumps back to this state, put these people back to work.